My name is Sandra. I'm an ordinary housewife. My husband Jim and I had no plan to have a wedding. It wasn't like we couldn't afford it, but we thought it was a waste to spend so much on a one-day event. Instead, we wanted to spend the money on nice appliances like Dyson and Smack, or have a nice dinner out on the weekends. We thought it was much worth enriching our own lives. However, my in-laws were against the idea. Moreover, they suggested having an extravagant wedding, so we had a hard time dealing with them. Jim was the only son, so it was understandable for his parents. To be excited. After we gathered some ideas to somehow dissuade the in-laws, we came up with a wedding photo shoot. Even if we splurged, it would be a few thousand, and the photos will be nice memory keeping. We can show to our future kids. Well, you were beautiful, Mom. I am still beautiful, right? And to have such an interaction would be fun. I actually want to see you in a wedding dress. A photo shoot is a great idea, so that I can look at it any time. Oh, thank you. We were quite excited when we were about to book. Jim suggested, "Why don't we invite our parents to the shooting? There is usually not much opportunity to take photos with them. I mean, if you're okay with it." That's a great idea. Let's do it. My parents will be thrilled too. I readily accepted this suggestion. I never imagined that it would turn out to be such a disaster. That evening, I called and invited my parents to the wedding photo shoot. They readily accepted. Jim called his parents next. So we decided to go for a wedding photo shoot. Why don't you guys join us? Right after he asked. I heard his mother groan over the phone. Instead of having a wedding, you're only gonna have a photo shoot. I can't accept such a ridiculous idea. Sandra came up with it, didn't she? Never mind. We agreed to spend our money on something more meaningful, instead of wasting so much on a wedding day. What a foolish thing to say! You're the eldest son and the first. To get married among the cousins, we need to show our status. Do you want to bring shame to the family? You're exaggerating. No, I'm not. What's wrong with Sandra? Why did she come up with such an absurd idea? This is why the poorly educated person is troublesome. It's a fact that I didn't go to university. I thought it wasn't useful for me to go for the sake of just going, and I've never regretted having only a high school diploma. Since I started working early, I was able to meet a variety of people, and in fact, I met Jim, my husband, at a business meeting. If I had gone to university, I'm sure there was a higher chance of us missing each other. However, if I argue with her, it would lead to a bigger problem, so I just kept my mouth shut. It was me who came up with the idea. Stop talking bad about her. You're right. You're both ignorant. What have I done wrong to have a son like you, just like your father? You are stupid. After she called us offensive names, I have no choice now. I will put in twenty thousand dollars, so you must have a wedding. If not, I'll never speak to you again. She clammed and hung up. Troubled, we consulted with my mom. I understand what you guys are saying, so I don't disagree. But I also don't think what James' mother says is wrong. It's indeed nice to see many people giving blessings to my own child. And it's a right occasional to be the center of the stage. There's not much other chance to introduce yourself to the crowd. Indeed, if money's the only issue, your dad and I will help you as well. It doesn't have to be a big wedding hall, but there are other smaller venues like restaurants, you know. You're right. Let us think it over. 
I only had an image of weddings being big and extravagant, but a smaller scale sounded nice. I sought the light at the end of the tunnel. I was glad to have spoken with my mom. With age comes wisdom. After the conversation, I realized that my parents also wanted us to have a wedding. Jim and I reconsidered and decided to have a small wedding. After about a month of searching for a venue, we decided on the same place my colleague had their wedding. I was told that I could get a referral discount, which was the crucial factor, but I wasn't gonna tell my in-laws, who would think I was stingy. My parents were happy to hear about the venue. Next was the in-laws. It sounded like my father-in-law had picked up the phone this time. Hey, Dad. You know, after talking with Mom, Sandra and I reconsidered, and we decided to have a wedding. Oh, that's better! If there was no wedding, your mom and I would have been ashamed. We were going to cut ties with you. You too are exaggerating. But anyway, I just wanted to let you know, we are going to decide the date and other things later. Jim was about to hang up when he froze at what his dad said. The venue has already been decided by us. Huh? What do you mean? We don't want to be embarrassed by having it at a shabby place. We decided on having it at a well-known big wedding hall. And then his mom took over the phone. My acquaintance is the owner of the hall. Your dad and I got married there. We already rebooked for you. Wait, what? The... This is for your own good. Besides, if Sandra was to decide, she would just choose a place recommended by her friend, probably with a referral discount. How did he know? Who cares? It's not a bad thing to save money. No way. All the relatives are coming. We won't let you have a small wedding at a rundown venue. Jim tried hard to protest, but his parents were adamant and didn't budge. It was becoming hostile. Wherever is okay for me. I inserted myself and ended their arguments. I'm really sorry about my stubborn parents. He looked quite upset. No worries. They must be very proud of you, and want to introduce us to everyone. It's an honor. They sounded like they only cared about showing off their status. They have always been pretentious. You're thinking too much into it. A little while later, Jim's dad gave us the name and address of the hall, and we went to have a look. It was a big and pretty famous hall with a long history. But it also had an old-fashioned feel. Well, old establishments were more or less like this everywhere. To be honest, I preferred the one I found, but there was no point in complaining. We finished the viewing led by the staff. The staff treated us with respect and kindness, but I assumed that if they could take a last-minute booking, it wasn't a popular venue. It must have been a trendy place in the seventies. Seeing my subtle disappointment, the other venue was better, you know. I'm really sorry. He apologized. Don't be sorry. I don't have an obsession with weddings from the beginning. We weren't even gonna have one anyway. I tried my best to cheer up my apologetic husband, and then. We started going over the details with the planner. However, Jim's parents wanted to interfere with everything. First, they complained about the guest list. It seems the number of relatives is too low, doesn't it? I gave you the list. The list had so many names of people I had never met. There's no point in inviting strangers. Maybe you don't know them, but. They are important to us. They must be invited. I don't want to invite people I don't care about to our wedding. Besides, even if they come, I doubt that they will give us a wholehearted blessing. Jim pushed back hard. 
and convinced them by promising to send our wedding photo. They even criticized my guest list. These are the names of your friends, right? Right. Any problem? If they are your friends, they must not be so important. The names sound low class, anyway. What? I yelled. Jim's mom continued to say, "What? I just stated the truth. I'm sure they weren't worth acquainted with. Can you take them off of the list? I don't want the level of the wedding to be downgraded by them." She said whatever she wanted to say. I was outraged inside. I could take insults about myself, but it was intolerable to hear about my good friends. Besides. What she said was totally wrong about my friends. She kept meddling with other things like the wedding cake and dinner course, but Jim rejected her ideas by saying, "We will decide." The final blow was about my wedding dress. I just wanted a simple and sophisticated dress. I'm not interested in wearing a big, puffy dress with a long trail. It must be difficult to wear and walk in it. Moreover, the designer brand is out of the question. My simple dress would be more than enough. It looks more extravagant if you wear a big dress. Besides, the guests would think that we're too poor to afford the design brand. We are done if we show weakness. She sounded more concerned about looking good for her relatives than the dress itself. I almost agreed with her because she sounded like it was a life or death matter. Stop meddling with our wedding, Jim declined her request once again. When all the plan was getting solidified, we were called to visit Jim's parents. Don't need to go; they're not gonna tell us anything worth anyway. Jim was reluctant. I didn't feel comfortable dismissing them. So we decided to visit. We're busy, so let's make it short. As soon as we arrived, Jim suggested. His dad began to say, "It's about your wedding. See, this is why I don't want to see you guys. How much do you need to criticize our wedding? Let me finish. We forgot to put one person on the list as he wasn't sure about his schedule. Who?" Mr. A, he's a politician, huh? But why? I've heard the name somewhere. I was wondering from where. Jim gave me the answer. There was a guy giving a campaign speech the other day. You know, the one with the loud voice. I remember the politician, who used to be an NFL player and often appeared on TV. I actually knew him well. Why is Mr. A coming to our wedding? We never met him. I was able to get him to attend through my business connection. Besides, we would look well established if a politician was present. My relatives will reaffirm my status. He looked proud of himself, and Jim's mom gave him a peck on his cheek. Jim and I were flabbergasting. Jim's dad looked at me. And what about you? Who do you invite? Even though you don't have a politician acquaintance, you must know someone powerful. Um, no, I don't have a plan to invite anyone of any sort. No way! Jim's mom exclaimed to my reply. Don't you have anyone? She pressed. No one like that among my guests. I mumbled. Uh huh. Jim's dad cleared his throat and said, "A daughter-in-law who doesn't have any connection is no use to us. How do you think you can fit into our family? I guess it's the difference in status between my family and yours. It is what it is." He degraded my parents. Of course, I was ready to respond, but Jim was irritated. Yelled, "Enough! Never mind. Let's get out of here, Sandra." We'll never come here again. He grabbed my hand as he stood up, but I pulled his hand and said, "Hold on." Why? 
I understand what you guys are saying. I don't have such connections, but I put some names you might recognize on the list. What? As my friends, you know. I shoveled the table arrangement in front of Jim's dad and pointed at one of the names. His eyes were wide open as he saw it. No way! It's she. Um, you're familiar with Jennifer? Of course, she's the daughter of Mr. A. She's in many movies. Jim's mom took the paper out of the trembling hands, and she widened her eyes as big as his. Oh my God! How do you know such a famous person? She's my childhood friend. We lived on the same street and used to play together. Of course, I know Mr. A as well. I normally call him by his nickname, so I didn't realize earlier. Mr. A used to babysit me in the past. Both of them looked dumbfounded when I showed them a few pictures. They were taken at a birthday party of Jennifer. One picture showed Mr. A in between Jennifer and me, holding our shoulders. This must have proved to them that I wasn't making up a story. By the way, what else? You say you invite Mr. A through your business connection, right? Right. There's a misunderstanding. I asked Jennifer to bring him. Even before you used your connection, he confirmed his attendance. What? Jim's dad was astounded. You see, I had been quite upset with them criticizing our wedding, especially insulting my parents and friends. I unfolded what had been going on with my in-laws and Mr. A. Pleaded with him to attend the wedding amidst his busy schedule. Sure thing, I can't turn down your request. Of course, I'll be there. <laughs> He cheerfully accepted. I invite Mr. A and Jennifer as my good friends, so I don't plan to ask them to give a speech and attract unnecessary attention to them at my wedding. Wait, since they are making time to come all the way, might as well. That's why I want them to simply enjoy, since they are rearranging their busy schedule just for me. They are my dearest friends. I don't give a hoot about your status in class. If you still want to complain, don't attend our wedding, okay? I put a big smile on my face. They were too stunned and couldn't say anything more. Jim and I left them right after. Since then, they had never tried to meddle with us. It must have been such a shock to them, as I crushed their pride. Better throw such foolish pride into the trash. It's worthless, you know. A few days later, they came to give us a thirty thousand dollars check. They entreated us to accept the money, since they pushed us to have the wedding we didn't want. Of course, I tried to decline, but they didn't budge. So I gratefully accepted. And we had a wedding. Thanks to the check, we could throw a lavish party, and entertain Mr. A and Jennifer to the fullest. Such a gorgeous wedding! The course was amazing. My other friends were also pleased. Jim and I were very much content, but we were surprised to see his parents having a good time. They finally realized how foolish they were after the incident. They apologized to all of their family and relatives for their ill treatment in the past, so they looked relieved. After the wedding, they apologized to us for everything. I forgave them, and we moved on. Three years later, I gave birth to a girl two years ago, and we're a family of three now. Jim's parents live nearby. They often come to see their first grandchild and take initiative to babysit her. Mom, you got breadcrumbs around your mouth again. Jim's mom and I became like friends, and the two of us even take short trips together. I never imagined us having a good relationship as such three years ago. I'm grateful to Mr. A and Jennifer for giving us the opportunity. I hope that the three of us and my in-laws will have a long, happy life together.